In the late 1980s, Japanese author Aya Nishitani wrote and published the first book in a trilogy he was writing, with illustrations by Hiroyuki Kitazume, Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei was released and became enough of a success to spawn not only a one episode anime OVA, but multiple video games as well. A few video game adaptations of the book were spawned, but none more important than Digital Devil Monogatari Megami Tensei. Developed by Atlas and published by Namco, the game released on September 11th 1987, and would become popular enough to spawn multiple sequels and eventually evolve. And so, developed by Atlas in October of 1992 for the Super Famicom, the third game of the franchise titled Shin Megami Tensei was released and would become even more of a hit than its predecessors. Over time, Shin Megami Tensei, often abbreviated as SMT, would overtake the Megami Tensei name and grow into its own empire, spawning multiple spin-offs such as 1995's Jack Bros for the ill-fated Virtual Boy and 2002's Demi Kid's Light and Dark versions for the Game Boy Advance. None of these spin-offs, however, would become as big as the Persona series. Originally released in Japan on September 20th, 1996 for the Sony PlayStation, Megami Ibanroku Persona Be Your True Mind, although borrowing many elements from the games, was not labeled an SMT spin-off until it was brought to America, and given the shortly lived American name for the SMT series, Revelations. The Revelations prefix was only used for two games before being dropped completely, the other game of which being Revelations of the Demon Slayer, known as Megami Tensei Gaiden Last Bible in Japan. For the most part, all mainline Persona games are Sony System exclusives, with the exception of two outliers, the newly released Persona 4 Golden on Steam, and the previously mentioned first game in the series, Megami Ibanroku Persona. Published by Ask Entertainment and originally developed by Atlas, the Windows port of Megami Ibanroku Persona was initially announced on February 5th, 1999 via ASCII's website. It would come out on March 25th, 1999 and would release with only one version, which nowadays would be the equivalent of a collector's edition. It included the game, a trading card, and a bonus CD-ROM featuring multiple desktop accessories. It would be compatible with Windows 95 and 98, and on release it would retail for 8,800 yen, which, adjusting for inflation, would be $126.17 USD as of June 2020. Information on this port is beyond scarce. I could find absolutely no gameplay footage of it, and I only found four notable mentions of it online. First, were obviously websites like Wikipedia and the Megami Tensei Wiki, as well as some entries on websites like Game FAQs. Although these websites had little information on the port, at least they proved its existence. Second is the previously mentioned ASCII Entertainment announcement post, which gave details on the game's price at launch. Third is a YouTube video by a user named Craigly1234 of him receiving and unboxing the game. This video helped prove to me that this game was something findable and purchasable by an average Joe like me. The fourth and final important mention of this game online are mentions of in-game differences I found by two different people, one on a game FAQs board and the other on a Tumblr blog. A lot of misinformation exists about this port, so I'll keep it brief and only talk about two posts that I saw that talk about possible differences. First, let's talk about the guy in game FAQs. 11 years ago, when responding to a thread asking about the differences between the PC port and the PlayStation version, user Sly Strife claimed that he found a list of differences in the Megami Tensei wiki. He proceeded to post a list that claimed these changes existed in the port. The player can distribute the stats for all party members, not just the main character. Characters do not automatically select a new target if their original target is killed before they act. Experience after battle is distributed equally among party members. The player can turn off battle animations. There is no voice acting. If these were true, there would be quite interesting changes. Unfortunately, they are in direct contrast with our second and final example, the Tumblr blogger. On February 25th, 2015, Tumblr user Gabriulio posted on their blog Pandora's Box that they had gotten a copy of the PC version working, and they listed differences that read as follow. Loading times and battle speed are a lot better when compared to the PSX version. 
I've read before that you could distribute points to all party members in this version, but this information is false. You can only control the protagonist's stat growth. Likewise, I've heard that the game lacks what low voice acting the original had, but this is also false. I've also heard that you can turn off battle animations, but guess what? False again. One thing I do have to complain is the world map, which covers a very limited amount of space compared to the original. As you can tell, almost everything Gabriulio wrote contradicts what Sly Strife claimed to have found on the wiki. So now we're stuck at a crossroads. One person says this and one person says that, but who is right? Before we get into the gameplay, I have to give a huge shout out to my brother, the dreaded Andy. Without him, I would have never gotten this game working and we wouldn't have gameplay of this port at all. Andy not only got the game working on my computer, but was also nice enough to make a write-up about how you can get the game working on your own computer as well. If you are interested in trying this port, I strongly recommend you read the write-up that I left in the description below. My mission when playing the Windows port of Persona was to confirm or deny the differences I found listed on the various websites, which I will quickly repeat. Fast loading times, missing voice acting and dialogue noises, distributing stats on all party members, no auto-target, slight map differences, and finally, even experience distribution. I unfortunately can't confirm or deny the claim of being able to turn off battle animations as I can't navigate the menus because I do not speak Japanese. If I ever find updates on the accuracy of this claim, I will update the description of this video. First off is the claim of faster loading times, which is obviously true because when you're playing on a PlayStation, the system has to read the disc every time it needs to load something. But when you install the Windows version of the game, all the files are already on the PC, so it takes nowhere near as long. Next is the claim of missing voice acting and dialogue noises, which I can confirm are actually both still there. Most if not all of the voice acting is still there from the PSX version, or at least I didn't notice any missing lines of dialogue between all of my tests. And despite the Pandora's box blog saying that the sweat drop effect is missing, it is actually still there. Which means the PSP port of the game is the only version that actually lacks this sound effect for one reason or another. Next is the claim that you can distribute stats among all party members instead of just the protagonist, Naoya. As cool as this would be, it unfortunately isn't true at all. Under no circumstances in any release of the game can you ever distribute stats for any party member other than Naoya. Which is sad, because I feel like it would have been fun to balance stats for all five of your party members. Quickly I'll go through these two claims before getting to the last and biggest one. Auto target is not gone, it is still in the game and functions the same as it does in all other versions of the game. And even experience distribution is also not in the game, it is still distributed based on how much each party member does in that battle, just like the PSX and PSP versions. Last and most certainly not least are the map differences that exist only in the Windows port of Persona. In the Windows port of the game, the map is not only zoomed in more, but everything is darker. The skybox goes from blue in the PSX port to an almost bluish gray in the Windows port. All of the asphalt has changed colors from gray to a deep black, and so has the lines in between the bricks of the road. The shadows appear to work a little differently in the Windows port as well. Lastly, the UI seems to take up more of the screen than it does in the PSX version. In the end, the only differences in the Windows port Megami Ipan Roku Persona that I could find are faster loading times and a visually different map. But the gameplay differences aren't the only interesting thing about the Windows port of the first Persona game, because this game also came with a lot of extra goodies in the box. Before we get to the unboxing itself, I'd like to go on a little aside. Obtaining a copy of the PC version of Megami Ipan Roku Persona was actually harder than you may think. Unlike most Japanese exclusive games, I couldn't find anybody selling it on American eBay. Searching Japanese Amazon was a bust too until my good friend Dylan suggested that I search for it in Japanese kanji instead of romaji. So I did and luckily I found it. Next, I had to find a way to get the item from Japanese Amazon shipped to me, and that's where this great low proxy site called Zen Market comes into play. Zen Market ordered the item off of Amazon for me, shipped it to their warehouse in Osaka City, Japan, made sure it was okay, and then repackaged it and sent it back to me all the way in North America. 
I would like to say that this video is in no way sponsored or financially tied to Zen Market. I'm just extremely grateful for them because without them this video wouldn't exist. Their staff were nice and friendly and their prices were very reasonable. If you want your own copy of Megami Ibanroku Persona or any other kind of Japanese only product, I strongly recommend ordering through Zen Market. I'll leave a link in the description to their website. Now on to the unboxing. The box itself measures 9 inches tall, a little over 6.5 inches wide, and a little over an inch thick. The box is made out of a thick and rather hard cardboard, and the case can be popped open via a little protruding bump on the left side of the box. Upon opening the case, you will be greeted by a 74 page black and white manual, a small pink piece of paper, a small flyer, a blank jewel case with the game's disc inside, a trading card of one of the game's characters, and lastly, another piece of paper that features a survey and the mailing address of ASCII Corporation. To go into more detail, the pink slip of paper is a warning that says normal things like to take a break every 10 to 15 minutes. The trading card is of the character Igor and features the render of him holding his bone telephone which he uses in-game to summon personas. Lastly is the flyer, which is double-sided and advertises two games. On one side it advertises Megami Iban Roku Persona Digital Collection, which is a collection of minigames based off of Megami Iban Roku Persona. And on the other side of the flyer it advertises the game Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Digital Collection, which is also supposedly a minigame collection based off of SMT Devil Summoner. However, almost no information exists of this game, so I can't really tell you much about it. That's all that comes in the box. If you're interested in seeing full length footage of the unboxing or a quick skim of the manual, I'll leave both of those in the description of the video. As mentioned earlier in the video, the PC release of Megami Iban Roku Persona included many accessories, not just physical but digital as well. But before we look at all this, a short history lesson. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, when it was hard to just download any wallpaper you wanted off of Google, it was rather common to include wallpapers and screensavers with the computer release of your game, and sometimes they would even include desktop pets which is a little thing that can run around your screen and maybe mess with your computer a bit. A common and well-known desktop pet is Bonzi Buddy, a purple gorilla who was a desktop pet in the late 90s and early 2000s, and saw a resurgence in popularity in the late 2010s as a meme. However, the ever popular but annoying Bonzi Buddy was spyware. The almost unheard of and adorable Jack Frost desktop pet is not. Mostly, Jack will just run around and do a cartwheel every once in a while, but I'll be damned if he isn't the cutest while he does it. He can run on top of files and folders, he can parachute from big falls, he can sleep, and that's really it. You can make him big or small, and you can mute all the little noises he makes, but that's about all the Jack Frost desktop pet has in store. The next desktop accessory is the bone telephone the character Igor uses in the game to summon personas. It acts as a clock and a simple calculator, and thus only has the necessary buttons to use those. Plus two buttons at the top, one of which closes the phone, and the other switches between its functions and plays a sound clip of a man saying something that I can't quite understand. Next is a calendar that features a different character for every month and a nice little background. Nothing really interesting aside from that. In order from January to December, the characters featured are Mark, Takami, Maki, Trish, Brown, Ellie, Igor, Ayase, Naoya, Raiji and Kandori, Nanjo, and lastly Yukino. Then we have this text box here that appears to have something to do with the startup screen and to be honest that's all I really know about it. After that we have a boatload of trippy wallpapers and screensavers. The wallpapers feature some of the characters like Naoya, Yase, Maki, Brown, Nanjo, and Raiji. Interestingly enough though, we also have some wallpapers of Ultimate Arcana Personas, which includes Vishnu, Vohumana, Kali, Shiva, Skuld, and Lucifer. We also have a wallpaper of Hihokun and his girlfriend Hihochan who appear in the Snow Queen route of the game briefly. For the last wallpaper, we have this neat one of all of the characters on tube televisions, which personally reminds me of the aesthetic they would later use in Persona 4. Lastly are the screensavers, of which there are only two. One of them is a 3D spinning card I couldn't get working, and the other is this cute little Pyrojack one where a bunch of Pyrojacks light up parts of your screen. How cute.
And that's it. That's everything I could find and document on the Windows port of Megami Ibanroku Persona, which was the only Persona game on PC up until the recent release of Persona 4 Golden on Steam. If anyone has any additional information, please leave a comment below and I will update the description. Please as well, if you have any feedback on my video, I'd be very happy if you commented below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Wow, okay. Thanks so much for watching my video. I've been working on this video since August of 2019, and I am recording this end card thing on June 30th, 2020 at 1.15 a.m. So it's been a long journey. Most of this is my own fault. I probably have some sort of uh, attention issues, um, but it was a long journey and it took forever, but thank God I'm finally here because that was that was painful at times that was painful at times um i'd like to thank my brother andrew for um helping me get the game even working on my computer so i could conduct all of the research in this video and my friend dylan for helping me research a little bit um i wanted to take note of a couple things um i'm sorry for any shin Megami tensei fans um that are sad at the use of a lot of Persona music and less um, Shin Megami Tensei music. Um, in my videos I try to go for a uh, more relaxed um, aesthetic. So, and I couldn't really think of any uh, Shin Megami Tensei songs. I couldn't really fit in um, the Nocturne Battle theme in. It, there was just no spot to uh, put it in there and make it fit with the theme of the video. Uh, I'd also like to take note that during production for most of this video, there was like no gameplay of this game. Uh, about three months ago, someone uploaded gameplay of this, but uh, I'm gonna upload my raw footage anyway, just in case anyone wants to see that. But yeah, this end card's almost been going for two minutes, so thank you for watching.